know Tisha B'Av, they're not only crying over the destruction of the temple, they are crying over the destruction of every year. Because what did exile do to us? Exile took the best of our kids, the best of our kids, the best, best of Shabbos, the sweetest, and the number they can't find the best of Mikdash. They can't find the Holy Temple. And anyway, this is a story. That's the first thing the song is into it. I'm sure you know that I'm singing Friday night. Suddenly, about three, four hundred young people with white turbans, yogis, and swamis came in, and I'm singing, and they tell me there is one of them is the upcoming rock star, young lady, and in the middle of me singing, suddenly she came up on stage, and this is a little bit heartbreaking, and you have to give yourself the time. <coughs> She begin singing, I am bashing you, my name is bashing you, I'm the granddaughter of Moshe, the father of the bride. Shabbat, I was singing in the name Shabbat, the barber, don't make me laugh. Moishe the barber, don't make me cry. Every Shabbos morning, every Shabbos morning, my Zayda woke me up. And he said, Bashin, you my tie is his skin. Let's go to shul. It's Shabbos. Shabbos? Don't make me mad. Shabbos. Don't make me cry. 
so I said he would begin to daven and he would hold my hand so much love and so much love and he would cry so many holy tears I don't make me don't make me laugh I said to Daphne, don't make me cry. She would also say, Mazzetti took his talent, and he would say, Bashan, you may die again. I want you to carry my talent. When Bashan, you may tie his skin, I want you to carry my talent. The talent. Don't make me laugh. Talus, don't make me cry. And then my Zayn would walk up to the rabbi of the shul and would tell him, this is bashing you, my granddaughter. Can you please bless her? <coughs> ah, the rabbi would bless me. Don't make me laugh. The rabbi would bless me. Don't make me cry. Make a But I want you to know something which I forgot to mention on Thursday. So what happened to Bashan? Azayda obviously was a Zisigid, who told Shabbos morning to shul. Why didn't her father go to shul? See the old story. Her father completely broke away from Yiddish. And then after her grandfather passed away when she was eight years old, nobody took her to shul anymore. She ended up as another religion. And um, I want you to know that you cannot imagine how much I'm crying inside when I think of Russia. I was in touch with her for two, three years after that. And then suddenly someone she disappeared and I hope I'm still waiting. Maybe one Friday night we go to the Holy Wall and someone will tell me, you know, I am washing you. My Zayn is marching in the Baba from the front. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. I don't know if Amir remembers, I once played in a Lutheran college. And shouldn't happen. Where a Jew gave a few million dollars for the Lutheran college which is actually have nothing against it, but they are sending out missionaries to the world. It's a school for missionaries. But this he gave a few million dollars for the Lutheran College under one condition, that every year one Jew should give a lecture. So that one year I was invited to give a lecture. And their mamish sweet kids have nothing against them. They are learning to be missionaries. And I walk around to say hello to every future missionary, and suddenly I see a girl of 18 with a woman do it. I said to her, what are you doing here? I said, I'll tell you why I'm here. My parents want to wipe out everything Jewish from my heart. So they sent me here. So I said to her, so why do you still have a star of David? Just because of my problem. And then it was Thursday night, she was talking to me. And Mama, she was talking to me so long. About one o'clock at night, I said to her, what's your brother doing now? I meant, she lied, what's she doing? She looks at me and she says, oh, it's Thursday night, one o'clock. My brother is up and baking challah. Then she says to me, you know something? I'll only marry a person who my brother loves. 
let the sweet as pain. I also was in touch with her for a few years, and then somehow, you know, you always meet so many thousands of people. But I'm thinking of her and Tisha Bab. I hope she, I hope she'll, she'll be the way her Baba wants her to be. You know, I travel a little bit all over the world. Anybody in the world, when you talk about their parents, not so hard. About their grandparents, less hard. When you meet a yid, parents, not so hard. Baba and Zayda have tears on their eyes. The most, most estranged from Judaism. And here I want to share with you one more time and we'll to down the mouth. The Gemara says, it should never happen to anybody when the person, when a father dies, we should all live forever. But his father, the Zayda, is still alive. So you more hear Schneider. And then the grandson inherits from his grandfather. So the Gemara says, is it that the grandfather inherits, that the father inherits in his grave from his father and then gives it over to his son? Or can the grandson say, I'm coming directly to my grandfather. That's the Gemara. And now listen to this clear prophecy. The holy, the holy Vishnu said before Mashiach is coming, there will be a whole generation who inherit nothing from their parents. But you know what they have from their grandparents? But what they have from their grandparents will not go via their parents. But the whole generation would say, the Kayach Avu the Abakrasina. I'm coming straight from my Zayde. Unbelievable. The only thing I can bless you and me that our children should not have to say, I'm a Jew because of my grandparents. I bless you and me, our children should be able to say, oh, I'm a Jew because of my father, because of my mother. And you know something? When God spoke to Yitzchak, he would talk to him in the voice of Avon. When God spoke to Moshe, he would speak to him in the voice of Amram. When he spoke to Avram, he didn't speak to him in the voice of Terah. But when he spoke to Avram, it sounded like his own voice. In the good old days, when they had the privilege of performing a, a wedding in the household of the prayer, I would always bless them. I bless you. When God will speak to your children, you should be able to speak in your voice. Anyway, we should see the big best of Mikdash. And um, it's crazy, you know, like on your keeper, Tishba Waltz, at the end, you're not even hungry or thirsty anymore. Because right now we are getting out from the mikvah of Tishba. And you know, when you come out from a bath and shower, you feel refreshed. Can you imagine the mikvah of Tishba, the mikvah of the best of Mikdash, the Mea Shilaya, the mikvah of the Kain Guru? Awesome, awesome. And um, we should be privileged to sprinkle the We should be able to sprinkle this holy water of Tisha all over the world. Every heat, the whole world, the whole world. You know, friends, you think the world is crazy? The world is maybe bad, but not crazy. You know how hungry the world is? How hungry, how hungry the world is. I remember once I walked with a Hasidic Shahid in Paris, and he was telling me, in the evening, so holy, the going was so bad. We walked late at night on Pigalle. On Pigalle, I don't have to tell you, anybody has been there. I said, do me a favor, look at the eyes of the people. Can't you see how hungry they are with something horrible? They don't know what to do, so they do everything stupid. But your valve is the word hungry. And I want you to know something very deep. Why is Tisha B'Av, why are we fasting, why are we so thirsty? Just to give us a taste of thirsty the world. How thirsty the world is. And uh, Mamish, God should give us, Mamish, the best water. The Yerimahu Yetzimah Chaim on one day 
Mamish, living water would come out of every corner from your shrine, of every corner of every age, and we should, we should feed the world.